out to hook him while you can. It's bow time. Ah! Inside. On this week's episode of Your Hometown Road Trip, we're headed to Willington. It's a small town with a big heart. Join us as we find out about everything the town has to offer and all of its history. Your Hometown Road Trip, Wednesday, 1230, News Channel 6. The Live Viper 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. shock after a teenager was found dead on Sunday. She was nine months pregnant. The tragedy leaves family members heartbroken and a lot of questions. Graham Lee reports. A special tribute to 17-year-old Malaysia Hogg, who was found here on Sunday afternoon. She went missing on Valentine's Day, but her death is leaving the family shocked and devastated. Make sure you just tell your babies that you love them, because you don't know, you never know the last time that you're going to. family heartbroken after the Barnwell Police Department found the young girl on Sunday afternoon, less than a mile from her home. But some from the community say this tragedy could have been avoided had law enforcement done a bigger search. I got to respond back that law enforcement wasn't done doing what they had to do. They haven't done nothing. Nothing at all. Except for sit back, it seems like, and just let this stuff go by, and they don't do nothing. But the Hogg family says authorities were a significant help to them, though the outcome was not what they wanted. They were in contact with me every day to let me know the little details that was going on, and I was keeping them informed of the things. So, no, I don't think so. I think they did an excellent job. My sister passed away three years ago, and losing her, it was like losing my sister all over again. She meant everything. The family says a funeral for Malaysia will be held in the coming days. In the meantime, the sheriff's office is also still looking for 48-year-old Michael Still, who's been missing since last week. If you have any information on any of these cases, you're encouraged to contact them. In Barnwell County, Graham Lee, WJBF, News Channel 6. In Burke County, a woman is accused of killing her one-year-old daughter. 34-year-old Alicia Stevens is charged with second-degree murder. Police say they were called out to a home on Winter Road yesterday. When they arrived, officers say they found the little girl unresponsive in four feet of water. Experts say there's a fine line between poor parenting and child neglect. So some of the things we look for with neglect are just um, improper disciplining, um, kids coming to school not wearing the appropriate weather clothes. Uh, we live in Georgia, so that's hard, but like if it's 30 degrees out and wearing short sleeves and shorts, um, a lot of times with neglect, we'll see kids hoarding food. Sheriff's Office investigators say the child was in a hole that was dug for a septic tank. Stevens is in the Burke County Detention Center. A shooting investigation is underway in Richmond County. It happened this afternoon on Pamplona Drive. Investigators say they found an adult male and a woman, a female juvenile victim, rather, one female juvenile victim. Both were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. No suspects have been arrested. In Allendale, a murder case is becoming the first federal hate crime trial based on gender. It happened today in Columbia. Naquan Ritter is accused of shooting Ernest Doe Jr. to death in 2019. Doe was born a man but identified as a woman. Prosecutors accused Ritter of killing Doe once friends found out the two were having an affair and an intimate relationship. If convicted, he faces several life sentences. Well, time now for a first look at our weather, and Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller joins us now. And the sun was good to see, and it. it's so good it's still out right now. Yeah, it's still out right now, exactly. You notice that the sun is setting later and later. Later, later, that's right. Days are getting longer. Which is great, which means... 
Spring time is going to be here before you know it. Uh, head on the way later this week, and wait till you see what's heading our way next week. We'll talk all about that with your forecast in just a few minutes, Steve. All right, Tim, thanks so much. Well, several towns in Columbia County could soon become one. A recent feasibility study shows the consolidation and incorporation of Columbia County could be in everyone's best financial interest. Hannah Latier joins us live from the county's government office in Evans to explain the findings. Hannah. And that study, Valdosta State University, looked at Columbia County's previous financial reports and other data and determined that a proposed Columbia City would bring in more revenue. Harlem and Grovetown would still be their own cities with their own local governments. Unincorporated areas like Evans, Appling, Martinez, Winfield, and Leah would become one city. If incorporated, the study states that the county could possibly collect more franchise fees, reduce the millage rate, and alleviate the tax burden on residents, as well as receive more grants. Some concerns brought up by Harlem and Grove Town leaders are their ability to expand and if mailing addresses will stay the same. The study addresses this, and county manager Scott Johnson says the changes would mainly be on paper. We really feel like everything will remain the same operationally. Uh, we're not asking to, to change uh, our board of commissioners. We're not asking to add any additional layers of government. We're not asking for any new positions. Um, we're just simply looking at, at, at doing this as a possibility to um, increase the revenue stream, streams. As the proposal potentially moves its way through different levels of government before it reaches the ballots next year, Johnson says residents will have plenty of opportunities to voice their opinions and ask questions about it. Live in Evans, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. It's a change, of course, for Augusta leaders. Last year, commissioners voted to demolish the building due to its condition. We're talking about the boathouse, but now they have voted to repair the building instead. George Escala has the details. Last year, Augusta leaders wanted the boathouse gone. Now city leaders voting to fix it up. The boathouse situation is, is a tough situation because you have an organization using the boathouse uh, and the students who are utilizing that building, you know, they, they need a home. And so our decision to, uh, you know, kind of help that organization stay put. The move now allows the rowing club to remain at the boathouse. Some commissioners saying they changed their minds on tearing it down after seeing the condition of the building for themselves. I felt like, you know, let's tear it down and rebuild it. But after walking through there and, and talking with the rowing club and seeing uh, what could be done, we definitely, definitely can go in there and um, put some money to fix it up. Some commissioners favored demolition last year in order to start over with a marquee boathouse facility on the river. And commissioners still see that as a viable option. I don't think we really need to piecemeal it, knock something off, allow somebody to stay there for a period of time, and then you have to come back and spend another $600,000 to tear the rest of it down. But the boathouse is staying in place, at least for now, as the city prepares to put big dollars into fixing it up. In Augusta, George Escala, WJBF, News Channel 6. Coming up, early voting in South Carolina's Republican primary. We'll hear from supporters of uh, former President Donald Trump. All right, Jay, guess how many days until spring? 28? Yay. Is she right? She's right. <laughs> She's so good. Oh. 28 days till spring, but it's going to feel like it a lot sooner coming up. Shop these deals and more at Gerald Jones Ford and GeraldJonesFord.com. Early voting for the South Carolina Republican primaries is underway, and both candidates for the nomination are campaigning in the Palmetto State. And Chloe Salcedo was at former President Donald Trump's event in Greenville. Yeah. Hours before former President Trump arrived in Greenville, hundreds of his supporters waited in line outside the convention center. The first person arrived before the sun rose. We wanted to get here early enough so that we could have a, a good seat. <laughs> Love Trump and wanted to see what he had to say. While some supporters live in the upstate, 
Others travel long distances to hear Trump speak. Lynn Phillips and Jim Hinton made the long trip from Florida. I want to be able to show him how much we support him. But not everyone at the convention center was there to support Trump. A group of protesters gathered across the street. Try to help make people understand uh, some of the issues with uh, ex-president Trump. During Tuesday's town hall, Trump was asked about the race against Nikki Haley, saying he believes she'll lose in her home state. We can't do that. He also discussed President Biden committing to debate Biden if he becomes the GOP nominee. Trump touched on the war in Ukraine, energy prices, immigration, and election integrity. These were important issues to some in the crowd. Immigration and inflation, certainly. I'd like to hear something um, on election integrity, because that's what a lot of people are concerned with, that elections aren't fair. in any combination. Teen dating violence can be prevented when teens are empowered through family, friends, and role models such as teachers, coaches, mentors, and youth group leaders to lead healthy lives and establish healthy relationships. We all play a role in helping to prevent abuse. Join WJBF News Channel 6 and Safe Homes of Augusta in recognizing the hidden crime of teen dating violence this year. When your enemy thinks you're weak, or an Audi Augusta, part of the Gerald Jones family. It's bow time. <laughs> What's that? The bow jingler from Bojangles. With the same bold flavor as the chicken. The same. And fries. The same. Mm, not the same. The Bojangler's back. Order in the app to hook one while you can. It's bow time. <laughs> you okay? Let's face it. News is complicated. That's why WJBF.com makes it easy. Get clear, accurate stories that don't waste your time. Plus, get the latest video in one click with WJBF Plus. Get it all at WJBF.com. What's old is new again in the world of music. We've already seen vinyl records make a comeback, and it looks like cassettes could be next. Young people in Japan are driving up sales of music cassettes, and companies are even bringing back Walkman-type players. Forbes magazine says cassette sales went up 20% in 2022. I like that Def Jam recordings. That, that takes you way back. Wow. You can make there. your own little mixtape. Mixtape, that's day, right. But, the big box. Yeah, but when it, when it gets stuck, you got to get the pencil and roll it to try to yeah, yeah. get it all. Oh, yeah. Some people don't have any idea what we're talking about. No, no, that's true. No. <laughs> no. That's right, but hey, it's an oldie but goodie. You know, I used to love the cassettes and waiting for music, a certain yeah. song to come on the radio, and you hit play and record at the same right. time. The two tape the deck. The two tape deck, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Good old time. I can't wait for the Victrola to come back. Oh, I'm really looking no, that. no, that's no, 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 no. All right, uh, 64 tomorrow. That's a nice little comeback with the uh, temperatures. How about 70 for Thursday and Friday? Maybe some showers early on Friday, but look at the weekend. The weekend looks to be delightful. But I know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Next week, mid seventies. You, you caught my eyes drifting over that way. Yeah. Wow. We're ready. Just keep a box of Kleenex because of the pollen in your fifty. It has already it's awesome started. Saw some on the car the other yeah. day. Yeah. I took my hand in my spare, and I was like, oh, here we go. So, listen, I'm here. That's our report for now. News Channel 6 continues at 7 o'clock right after World News tonight. We'll see you again for News Channel 6 at 11 as well. Have a nice evening.